and welcome to calculus. This is a little lesson introducing you to calculus and explaining why do we even need it. So if you've never watched my videos before, this is a lesson video. And so this is kind of a video where I go through an overview of theory. I also have example videos where I just plow through a set of examples and you can explore my channel to figure out kind of what, what will work for you and your needs. But in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explore an example where calculus is more practical than, than algebra. And I'm going to really try to showcase why we have a need for it and also try to review a lot of mathematics that you maybe have had up to this point. So I want to think about the stereotypical problem in algebra. It's something like a car is driving down the road at a constant speed of 20 miles per hour. And then the next part of the problem is something about you know, when will a car reach its destination or how far did the car go or when will the car meet up with the train? But this is kind of the typical setup of an algebra problem that people make fun of in TV shows or movies, right? And I have a few issues with this problem. First of all, I'm not really into cars. So this is my channel and I want to change it. <laughs> so here's the first change that we're going to make to make this a little better. Instead of it being a car, why don't we make it a motorcycle. And you know what? In my case, let's make it a sidecar motorcycle. So let's visualize this scenario. Here is my sidecar motorcycle complete with my dog, Bella. <laughs> and so from algebra standpoint, this is, you know, the, the way that the world works with algebra. What is the issue with this? Well, this is just not how life works, right? When do you ever actually just go at this constant speed? If you think about it, just with motion in general, you're going to start and then you're going to go or you're going to have a turn or, you know, you could have a stop. So speed changes. And so this is not a realistic problem. And I want to think about what would be something realistic. So let's go back to one of the pieces of film I just showed you. Consider the case where I am stopped and then I decide to go down the road a little bit. Okay, there are several questions that we could consider about this situation. The first thing I want to think about here is a pre-calculus level question. So, at the start I was not moving, right? But then maybe after 20 seconds, let's say that I traveled 734 feet. The pre-calculus question would be, what was my average speed? Now, from this situation, we actually get two data points. The two data points are 0, 0, which is I wasn't moving, and then after 20 seconds, I go 734 feet. So what I want to do is I want to plot these two data points. So thinking about this, we know that this piece here, this side is going to be time, and this part here is going to be distance, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot these two points. So I'll use this green color here. So here's 0, 0. And then I don't have a scale here. So let's just say that this is <laughs> whatever scale I need so that I can plot this point here. Okay, so here's the question. If I connect these two points just like this, does that model basically the motion that we saw in the video where I was stopped and then I got up to speed and I went? It would not, right? This is not a line. This was a line that would represent constant speed, going the same speed at all times. But that's not what I actually did in the video, right? I was stopped and then I started to go and then I started to pick up speed. So that situation would be modeled by starting here. You're slowed down a little bit. And then as you start to pick up the pace, your speed will go up like this. So this is my actual travel, and what would this green line represent? The green line is more representative of a traveling at an average constant speed. So maybe we'll call this line the average travel. Now, this line actually relates to pre-calculus, as this is a pre-calculus concept. So if I take a curve like this and I just select two points, say the two green points that I already selected, and then I draw this line in between them as shown, what is this line actually called? In pre-calculus, one thing that we would have discussed is that this is also called the secant line. 
can see good line. And this actually we can get a, a useful piece of information out of that we, we want for this particular problem. So the slope of the secant line represents the average speed. So let's just note that. So if I'm trying to answer this question of what was the average speed, how can I determine that? Well, I just need to know the slope of this line and we can just use the slope formula. So let's state that. So I've cleared some space and the slope formula, so that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I can basically just plug in these two points that we started with, right? And then I can, I can figure out my slope here. So in this case, this is going to be 734 minus 0 over 20 minus 0. So that comes out to 36.7. 36.7 what? Okay, so remember this was in feet per second. All right. That's not exactly illuminating. So if you did a little bit of dimensional analysis, what you would find is that that actually comes out to about 25 miles per hour. It's not exactly a fast motorcycle. <laughs> now, the way that I have approached this, this is kind of a, a basic algebra way of looking at things. In pre-calculus, you actually found the slopes of a, a secant line in a slightly different manner. So now I want to just reframe this in a slightly different way. So with a secant line, what you're interested in is you're interested in, in the leftmost and rightmost point, and you're actually more interested in the distance between them. So if I think about the distance between them, so I've got this, this yellow color here, so I'm trying to draw this nice and clear down here. And so I'm basically interested in what is this distance. So precalculus starts to warm you up for this idea that you have a distance between the two points, just like this. This yellow line, this distance between the two points, is what we call h. And then we make a slight reframing of how we think about this. We translate all of this into the language of functions. So this first point, the point that's the most on the, the, the left, this is my point x, and then this point over here, so I go from x and then I add h to it, so this is x plus h. Then you basically plug these points into your function. So if I wanted to maybe translate that, this would actually be the point over here, so I'll write it on the side, this would be the point x f of x, and then this point here we would think of as x and f of x plus h. Okay, so in pre-calculus what you do is you actually try to find the slope with this reframing of things and you'll see why this becomes a pre-calculus thing and why we think of this in terms of h. I'm, I'm going to be answering that in a moment. So I want to reframe this whole slope so let me erase this and let me just do the slope formula again except now I'm going to do it like this. So I'm going to take it as f of x plus h. Let's see, I need a little more room. I'll do it over here. I'll say m equals f of x plus h minus f of x. So notice that's just representing the y coordinates, right? So if you look at those two. So I'm, I'm just switching the language of a slope. And then this would all be over x plus h minus x. Now, if you reframe it like this, you can totally simplify the bottom, right? So the bottom becomes, so this is still f of x plus h minus f of x on the top. And then in the bottom, we're just left with h. So this formula is used a lot in pre-calculus and it's what's known as the difference quotient. And we use the difference quotient for when we're figuring out the slopes of secant lines. But we would still ultimately get the same answer, right? So at the end of the day, what's really gonna end up happening is I still plug in the same stuff and I still get to the same answer, so I don't have to repeat all that. So this kind of reviews and covers a pre-calculus thing, so how we got from algebra to pre-calculus. And so now we fully understand this idea behind the, the secant line. But what if I wanted to know how fast I was moving at 10 seconds into my ride? How can I do this now using what I know in pre-calculus? So here's that graph again without all that other stuff on it. And so we figured out the average speed kind of using all this for, 
for a 20 seconds into a ride. So if you think about where the 10 second mark might be, so again, pretend this is to, to scale. So let's pretend that this is 10 seconds in. How can I figure out how fast I was going? And this is this right here is the actual travel, right? How fast was I going at this moment? What's a pre-calculus solution? Well, what you could do is, since you can choose any points that you want, you could actually just take those points that we had and you could put them a little bit closer together. So here's what I mean. I could take this point here and this point here. And so look at what happens if I connect them. If I connect them like this, so it looks like I'm getting a little bit closer to the, the curve here, right? Like it looks like I've, I'm traveling much closer to it. So this would be a better estimate of how fast I was going at 10 seconds. And I can use the same methods we just discussed to figure out just the slope of this secant line. Now this isn't perfect, right? We can see that we could probably make a better estimate if I slid those points a little closer together. So let me do that. So now here are those two points uh, or two new points and that line actually looks a lot better, but we still know it's not gonna be perfect on the curve. So the game that we can kind of play here is we can get a better and better estimate of how fast I was going at around this period if we keep sliding the points closer together. So what happens if I put the points right next to each other? Maybe a situation that looks like this, or if I slide them so, so close together, I can't tell the difference between them anymore, that would look like this situation here. Now remember, in the back of our mind, we know that I really slid two points together, but but for the human eye, we'll say they're so close that it looks like it's the same point. Now, if I connect those two points, imagine what the line will look like. It's gonna look something like this. And once you slide these points so close together like this, a couple of things happen you no longer have a line that is going kind of between the, the curve like this. You can actually imagine that we have now a line that is sitting directly on that curve and perfectly on that curve. And when that happens, this is what's known now as a tangent line. Our secant line becomes a tangent line when those two points get slid perfectly together. And what we also get here is we move from now having average speed to the exact speed at that moment, which is what we call instantaneous speed. So this is very interesting once you slide the two points together and it gives us a new piece of information. But there's actually a big problem with this. Let's look at the difference quotient again. Remember what that H was. H is the distance between the two points. If I have slid my two points so that they are basically on top of one another, what is the distance between them now? In this situation, we would have that h would equal zero. This is actually another thing that makes a tangent line different from the secant line. A secant line will have a distance between the two points. With the tangent line, we are really moving towards having no distance between those two points. And mathematically, if I plug zero into this, there's a big problem. I get a zero in the denominator. So. This almost doesn't make any sense, right? Because there's no reason I can't do this visually. I can completely see that this works and I can see how this might create this thing called a tangent line. And yet mathematically, I have this, this conundrum here. And so this is actually the exact moment in a pre-calculus class where calculus is needed. How do you resolve this situation that I can see that I can definitely do on a graph, but I can't seem to resolve in the formula? And the answer is you take calculus to resolve this. We actually need several skills to help us figure out this little conundrum here. And the first thing that we're gonna learn about is a thing called a limit, which will then later open up a set of skills that we need to resolve this problem. So strap in guys, this is going to be an awesome ride. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time.